We got a great video for you today, folks. Man, in today's video, we're going to show you how to expand your existing laminate flooring into another room, such as this room here, that's already carpeted. And all of that starts right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel again. I am Jeff and we're glad you're here today. And if this is your first time here and you don't know about our channel, we give you world-class home renovation tips, world-class kitchen renovation tips. We give you world-class bathroom renovation tips and world-class flooring renovation tips. So today, that's what we're doing here. We're doing flooring. And if this is your first time here at the channel, you might wanna hit that subscribe button down below and then click on that little bell icon next to it. That will alert you every time we upload a video because with all of these free masterclass videos we give for you, man, you do not wanna miss a single one. All right, so let's hop right into it. Well, you can see we have all of our wood already sitting here waiting in place here. This is our laminate flooring here. And it's been acclimating to the room for 48 hours, which you're usually required to do by most of the manufacturers. And that's the room we're going to put it in. And today, we're going to show you all of the engineering complications you're going to face. All right, so this is the room we want to expand into here. So this is what we call here in Florida, if you're not familiar, we call this a Florida room typically. And this is when you have a room that used to be a patio, a screened in patio, and they've taken it and they've enclosed it with these windows and these kind of cheapy partition walls, and they had it carpeted. And so we had just completed this flip here, and the new buyers wanted wood flooring out there, and they wanted us to continue this wood flooring here that you can see that we had already had installed here in the, in the living room here in this condo. So we're going to do that, but this comes with a really hefty engineering dilemma here, and we're going to show you what that is right here. Uh, first, you know, we will have to pull up the carpet and then all of the carpet tack strips, but let's take a look at our engineering dilemma. Okay, now some of you might recognize this scenario here. This is from a video we shot in December where we showed how to transition this wood floor here into this carpeted floor, which is an inch and a half lower than the living room floor. The reason why it is, is this used to be, you know, like I said, a patio, a screened in patio. And once they screened it in, uh, they once they converted the screened-in patio into a regular uh, enclosed room now, they removed the sliding glass doors that used to be here. But so now you can see just how much height we're going to have here. This is going to be a big problem for us. And we'll see clearly once we get these tack strips out of the way after we, we remove this carpet, you will see clearly just the major height difference that we're going to be faced with here. We could be looking at a double, uh, you know, a, a double transition piece. Okay, so now it is time to remove the carpet tack strips. Now we have a video that shows you how to do that, how to do it quickly around the room in real time, in a nice quick production time. But I'm just using my hammer and my little crowbar here, and that's pretty much all I use. That's all I ever need. Just go like this. So now we're going to start opening these boxes and taking the planks out. And what I typically do is I work here from about three or four different boxes. And I go one plank from here, one plank from here, another plank from there. You never want to start laying your planks across the floor from the same box. You want to randomize everything. Make them look a little bit different. So here is our engineering problem now. 
if you take your, let's say this is going to be our last row of planks and then we come up against the, the existing floor here, you can see there's well over an inch of difference there. So what do you do? Um, you know, when you're dealing with going from transitioning from one room into another with your wood flooring, you don't normally have this kind of issue because they're normally within a quarter of an inch of each other and you can do it with a, you know, with one of these T-mold pieces here, you know, bridge that gap and you'd be fine. In this case, that's way too much of a gap to overcome. So what are our choices here? Well, we have a couple of pieces we can look at and play with. It's not going to be like the most eloquent solution, but this is a threshold piece. And so if you look at that profile there, you'd say, well, maybe one way we could do it, and this is an unorthodox method of using this piece. Okay. So we would put it right here up against that, and you would have to have something underneath it to balance um, you know, like a C-channel and glue it to the C-channel underneath that. Just like we did with this. See how we had that, that metal, that aluminum there underneath this to elevate this threshold piece up to meet that level of the floor there. So what we would do is do something similar to that. You would have very minimal lippage here between the, the two floors. It wouldn't, you know, it's not like the most perfect, smooth looking, seamless type of a of a, a junction there, but it would be functional and this wood would still be allowed to expand and contract back and forth underneath this transition piece. Well, what if we tried to go backwards with it? Well, not really backwards and because uh, in this case that's really how the piece gets used over a piece of wood floor. But if we were to go like that in that direction, it would just look, it, it looks really weird. A lot of lippage there and then because of the way they diagonally cut these edges, you'd have going down into a crack there. So that, in my opinion, would not be uh, very good either. So, what about a T-mold? What can we do with the T-mold? Well, you can't really put it at an angle like that. That would be too steep. And if you, you might be able to put it like that. <clears throat> So there's what the T-mold piece would look like here like that and then you would have to pull the wood out just a little bit so that it would be able to expand and contract and all that. And you'd have to support the underside of this T-mold piece again with C-channel. So it would look kind of like that. So the only problem man, is you have you know, almost a half an inch bump up there. So you have to decide, hey, is that too much of a tripping hazard for people? Um, you know, here in Florida, where we go from a floor down a sliding glass door frame, you know, onto the floor there, out to the patio, people are accustomed to those kind of drops, you know. You could trip on the stairs just as equ equally as well. So, and these are the, the judgment calls you need to make here. The, the other opportunity that you could be faced with here you have one other option, and that is if you know somebody who's really good at wood making, um, you know, like your Norm Abram type guy that has all the, 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 the drill bits and that has all of the router bits and they know how to carve wood and everything, they can make you a single piece, threshold piece that starts up here and comes all the way down here, you know, nice and wide, nice wide plate that's gently curved. But that, you know, that takes somebody of, you know, particular skill, you, you would just have to find them and I'm sure that wouldn't be cheap. It would probably cost you a few hundred dollars. Um, I mean, these threshold pieces right here, six foot length, these things are about $60 anyway. That's where the, where the wood manufacturers get you here on these, is the, the transitions. The transition pieces are just extremely expensive. So getting a woodworker to do this for you um, as a single wide piece like this would probably be your, your best bet.
Okay, so now when we get to these little corner areas here, things start to get a little tricky. So now we have to figure out, well, here's our piece. How are we going to figure out how to cut it? Well, what I normally do is I first dry fit it into place so I know where it's going to lay. And we know, um, we're pretty sure we're going to get this to slide under that wood piece, so that's not an issue. I just need to know what's going to happen here. So for that, we use our little contour tool. I normally use this when I'm doing tiling as well, but we basically put it in there. You slide all the pieces in there till it matches the contour there. See right there. And then we just have to figure out, once we bring it back over here to trace it onto our our panel here, we want to make sure we come in a 5 sixteenths of an inch less all the way around this whole pattern here. So I'll trace it once in pencil and then I'll come back and create a second line. So this is what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go like this. I'll trace the whole thing here. All right. So now I have a line here and I'm going to draw a second line that's about 5 sixteenths of an inch less. And it follows that contour of that line. That way we make sure when we cut this plank here and put it in here will be the proper gap away. This manufacturer wants us to be 5 sixteenths of an inch away from the wall. So that's what we'll do. I'll take this out there right now and we'll do this on the table saw. It'll, I think it'll be easier to cut that kind of a cut on the table saw. All right, so now we have our piece cut and let's see how well it fits here. I'm just gonna get him here and force him under there a little bit. Give him some love taps. And then I think we'll stop it right there. And that looks pretty good, huh? See, so using this contour tool here really helps out. Gives you accurate measurements. Measure once, cut once, have a beer. Well, here we go. We're looking at the, the uh, final piece was put in of the flooring here, and it looks really good. This patio looks so much better than it did before. If you remember, it was that, that big Berber carpet is what we had in here, and now it just looks really nice. And so now we're going to be focusing our attention on this transition here between the two rooms here. This is the patio, and remember, this patio is an inch or so below this living room here, right? So this is what we're going to be working on next. But you see all these pieces on the edge here? So there's one, two pieces here, and then going down the wall there, there was like three other pieces. Believe it or not, those five pieces took about four or five hours this afternoon. You wouldn't think it to look like it. You think, ah, oh, just a little rip in place. Nope. Not that simple. And the reason is because is when you look here at this stucco that you see there, see all that? So we had to cut in and out. Now in some places we had to chisel. You can see where we had to chisel the stucco away at the bottom there because it was, it was kind of a sloppy job by the builder and it was sticking out way too far in certain parts. And so it, it created quite the challenge and then we had to chisel parts of the, the um, improperly done concrete underneath it. So uh, all of that adds up to time. If you have to start chiseling and vacuuming and chiseling and vacuuming, that adds up to a lot of time. Okay, now I'm a fan of not throwing anything in the landfill. So normally we have all of these boxes left over here and other people might throw them in the trash, but we recycle everything. I don't wanna needlessly build up our landfills when you have perfectly recyclable cardboard here. And I usually use this cool little tool here to do it with. So I'll show you how it works. Just take it and slice it up right there. Okay. 12 inch chunks. It's my favorite size, easiest to handle.
Okay, now as you look at that piece in the corner there, the leftmost piece in the corner, see how we had to cut it at an angle up there in order to get it to fit right because the floor here is sloped, see? So as we're dry fitting it, you can see it's cut at an angle. It's not straight up and down. So that was a little bit of a trickier cut there to get that one to work out right. We're not going to cope these corners. All right, so now finally we get to tackle the actual transition here. Now, as you can recall, we talked about we want to do this here, right? And so in order to keep this piece here from wanting to flop down, we're going to glue down this piece of wood that we already measured to be at the right height here to come up and support this guy right here. See that? So he's sitting right in there. And then we have the space in there still for the wood to expand in and out underneath um, our transition piece here. So we'll just glue everything down and it'll be rock solid. It won't move once it's glued down. Everything will be nice and perfect. Okay, so there's a better close-up shot there to show you exactly what we're talking about and exactly how this is going to work, see? So we will embed that piece of wood here that we cut, that piece, that shim, that will get embedded in the same type of PL adhesive. Uh, let's see if we can see it. Like this right over here, what we did a few months ago with this other transition on top of that. See how that had a metal a piece of C-channel there, and that's the PL adhesive that it's resting on so that you can float it and make it nice and level for your transition piece. But you can see we are rounding home here, rounding third, heading for home here now because we're almost done. We've got our baseboard pieces cut up. And so we're, once we get these transition pieces glued down, we'll be just fine here. And this is gonna look really nice. Okay, now look at this. And this will happen to you sometimes too. When I got this piece of trim, look how bowed it is. See that, how it bends like that? So I've got my 25 pound electrical tool bag back there, if you can see it back there, sitting there in the middle of the paper. I'm gonna put him on top of this guy to weigh him down and let him acclimate before we glue this guy down. Hopefully he will flatten out, otherwise we'll have to really put a lot of weight on him once we glue him down. All right, so there you can see we have all of our wood pieces in there. And these are our backers here that are going to help balance and shim up our, our transition pieces once we get them into place there. And so that's why we just wanted to make sure they all fit and that they're all level on the top because that's where the transition pieces are going to glue on. Now they can be off by like a sixteenth of an inch or so like you'll see this end, this end pieces. And that's fine because you're going to embed these into the adhesive just like you would embed tiles into the tile mortar. And so the important thing is once they're embedded in the adhesive, then you want to make sure that they are level along the top, just like you would tile. Okay, so I've got now here my PL adhesive and I'm going to lay a nice thick strip of it along the canal there. And that will be our embedment layer to lay these wood shims in. So you just go nice and slow. This stuff does not come out as quick as your regular caulk does, but you just lay it down nice and slow and thick. Just take your time, you're not in a race. This is a job of patience. Okay, now I'm just going to come along and get some more here. Remember to lay it nice and thick. This is an embedment layer here. Now we're going to embed the first piece in there and try to get it in there nice and level. next piece. And we'll just go all the way like that down the line. And we'll 
embed this piece in. Make sure he's level. We'll come back later with spirit levels and make sure our top surfaces are where we want them to be. So he's embedded in nicely now. And then finally, our last piece is going to go right here up against this one. Try to keep them both level. This end piece might need a little more glue underneath it. See how it's, it, it needs to be slightly higher than the floor there. So we have to put some more glue under it. Okay. So I shimmed up under it a little bit with a couple of wood shims. And I just want to make sure that these guys are all level front to back. I don't want them leaning that way. Okay, so all of our wood pieces are in now. And we're ready to put the transition on. And I know this looks like a mess now. It looks like a motley crew of all these wood pieces, but sometimes that's what you need to do to fit these things over a very, very bumpy, wavy floor. This was one of the worst uh, concrete pour jobs I've ever seen. And remember, this is at the spot where there used to be a sliding glass door. So I don't even see how in the world the builder got that sliding glass door to ever work or fit in here. Uh, it, was, it was taken out years ago by a previous owner. Well, here we are the next morning here, and we've gone ahead and taped up our two threshold pieces that we're going to glue down. So putting the weights on it overnight didn't do one bit of good at all. I mean, that was virtually 24 hours that it sat there, and it made zero gain for us. So you can see here right in the middle, it's actually moving about a, almost a half inch. So we're going to have to rely on the glue, the PL adhesive, to hold this thing down. Once we get these in place and get them glued down, we'll put a lot of weight on these and get them nice and flat like this. And once it dries overnight, it will be cured and flat and perfect. Okay, now as you see here, as we're dry fitting this threshold piece here onto the wood floor, when we go to glue this down, you can see that separation there at the end there. And so we're going to apply this clamp at the end once we get this whole thing weighed down nice and flat. And we'll clamp these two together there and that will make them come together a lot closer because you can see how, how that gap is there right at the very end, see that? Okay, now we're going to start to apply the PL adhesive. And we're just going to lay it on nice and thick up here on the top. Okay, so now we're going to apply right here onto the threshold piece as well. It's always good to, to apply it to both sides. That way you get 100% coverage. You'll make contact. And that provides you that extra margin of thickness that you might need. All right, so now we're going to flip it over and lay it down. And remember, when you lay it down, you should feel mushing. You should feel lots and lots of mush. That means you're setting down into the material, into the adhesive. If you don't feel mush, then you need to add some more. And then you can always lift it up and just see, does it look like it made contact and flattened down and I can see a few areas here that did not on the right hand side. So um, here it looks like we sort of got it, but on the right side of the piece over here, we have to add some more. See right over here on this side. See it didn't collapse down there. So that's how you know you need to add more. Sometimes you can get it, you only get it to pile up so high. Okay, so I've put my electrical tool bag here on top of the threshold to weigh it down to get rid of that bowing. So as you can see here, as we look across, we want to make sure it's touching all the way across, that it's touching the floor. And it is there. And likewise, we'll come around on this side here 
and it should be touching the floor there too. So it's doing really good. So we'll have to leave these here overnight for the PL adhesive to cure. Okay, so now that we have it lying flat on the ground, now we have to take our clamp here and we're going to clamp off here into the corner to bring these two pieces together here. This is going to be the challenge because it's not going to want to grip very well up top. So, yeah, you can see it uh, squeezing in together there. So if you watch that gap, you'll see it slowly close up there. It's getting tighter and tighter. So it's a good thing we had these clamps with us today. All right, so we're going to leave it like that overnight. We can't bump into this, can't touch it, can't do anything with this clamp. That has to stay exactly like it is. Now, because that clamp is going to add a lot of pressure, springing type pressure to this tr transition piece, we are now going to have to add a clamp over to the other side here too. See how that side's spread apart a little bit too? So we will have to put one there as well. Okay, so now we'll put the clamp here on this side as well. And let's just start by tightening it down. As I tighten it down, you'll see it start to close in that gap. I can make it get a good grip here. That's the challenge. See how it closes that gap there? So we just have to make sure this stays like it is and not move. Let it dry overnight and cure. So now as we step back and look and see what we have so far, we've put down the left piece here of the threshold that's glued down now. It's weighed down so it's flat to the floor because it was warped in both directions. It was warped up and down and it was bowed this way too. So that's why we have the clamps on both ends. So this piece is now completed. It is where it's supposed to be, in the position it's supposed to be, in its final resting place where it will cure. We'll let it dry for 24 hours. When we come in tomorrow, it will be rock solid. You won't even be able to move it nice and flat. So now we're ready to glue down the second piece here. All right, now that we have glue on both ends, we're going to flip him over, put him in place, his final resting position, and we'll get weights down on this too, because remember this piece was also bowed a little bit, so we have to get some weight down on here. Okay, so now that this other piece is in, you can see the big gap right there. It's about almost a quarter of an inch. See how it's got to get pushed down? So we're going to get some weight onto this as well. Okay, so I got this heavy bin of parts here. I'm gonna set this down on top of it. And you can see how it forced it all the way down to the floor there. Okay, now as we come in and take a closer look, you can see right there in the center of the screen is the joint between the two parts, the two threshold pieces there. So you want to make sure when you're doing your wood flooring that when you install two pieces of threshold or any other type of molding that have to come together, you want to make sure they come together absolutely perfect like that. You don't want any lippage. And then as we check here, as we go down the line, we're making sure that, that this is indeed touching the floor. It's all the way down, pushed down by our weight. And here's what it looks like when you look at the whole picture here. Looks like a mess of a bunch of different things piled up, but you know, when you have to control different parts into different directions, this is what it looks like. Okay, so here we are the next morning. We're peeling off the tape for the big reveal, and we'll see how this came out.
So as you can see here, this looks very nice for what it is. You know, it's two thresholds back to back, making one sort of a large threshold. But because the wood is so beautiful, it really doesn't look that bad. It's not, it's not a whole lot worse than, than having um, an expert wood person come in and you make you a, you know, a custom plate here. But the owners didn't want it. They wanted this. They were happy with this. And if they're happy, I'm happy. Hopefully you're happy. And here's the view from the living room side approaching out into the patio here. So it, the flooring out here actually really came out nice. And we just got done painting the uh, patio here. This was white. We painted it to match the interior color of these walls in here as well. So that came out pretty nice too. And we're just finishing up the final touches on the baseboards, doing some sanding where our joints are. And we'll be caulking that as well. Right, so I just wanted to show you close up here. Uh, remember it was all warped and bent out of shape yesterday and we put the weights on it to weigh it down once we applied that PL adhesive. So now it's looking really good there and there's the seam there between the two pieces. And so this came out pretty nice. I would call this one very successful. And we push on it, we've stepped on it, it is rock hard. It's not going anywhere. So this, folks, is how you do a transition from one wood floor that's much higher up than another one. An inch and a half drop that really cannot be overcome by any kind of reducer piece. Reducer pieces are, are really meant to match floor heights that are about a half inch at the most, really. And here's the finished product now. Walking from the living room into our new expanded wood floor into our patio it really does look a lot nicer now that it actually looks like it's one in one homogeneous room here so there's the paint job we did we used a really nice tall five and a half inch baseboard and looking back into the living room there you can see our transition there but not too bad considering that we were transitioning from one floor to another floor that was about one and a half inches or more lower. Well, we hope you found this video useful. And if you did, we'd appreciate it if you give us a thumbs up down below. And if you like this video, maybe you'll want to hit the subscribe button down below too and hit that alert bell down there so that you'll be notified every time we upload a video and you'll never miss one. So anyway, that's it for this week, folks. We'll see you on the next one, and you have a great week. Bye now.